remind you once uh, very quickly what we are doing. Uh, we have started to learn concepts of organic chemistry before we can start with uh, reaction mechanisms. So we have already completed inductive effect. Now uh, we are in position to start with hyperconjugation. Hyperconjugation will be another important concept before we can start with reaction mechanisms. So quickly we will try to complete hyperconjugation and then we will move on to further topics. Now before we start with hyperconjugation, let me present to you an analogy. Suppose I have a chamber divided into two halves. One of the half has some gas and the other half either has vacuum or have very low pressure of the gas. And there's a knob. And when I, when I open this knob, what will happen? These gases, the one which is at the high pressure will move towards the low pressure. This will happen spontaneously, instantly. You cannot have a system where two halves one of the half is at high pressure and the other half is at low pressure. The system cannot remain stable in the position it has been shown here. The first thing that will happen is the gas from the high pressure will move towards the low pressure and not all of the gas from high pressure will move towards the low pressure. There will be some kind of equilibrium established when the pressure between the both the chambers are equal then gases flow, the flow of the gas from one chamber to another will stop. Now, we have a similar kind of situation here in chemistry. Suppose there's a bond, there's a carbon-hydrogen bond, and adjacent to this carbon-hydrogen bond, you have a MTP orbital. Now, this, in this region, you have electronic high pressure, and in this MT orbital, we have electronic vacuum. Before we start with this, let me tell you, uh, in organic chemistry, we, we consider electron as a wave. We consider the wave nature of electron. After having studied atomic structure, you must be knowing electrons have both particle nature and wave nature. In most of the organic, uh, most of the phenomena is explained by wave nature of electrons. So hereafter, most of the time we'll be considering the wave nature of electron. We will not consider electron as two particles between two nucleuses will always visualize electron as some wave between nucleus of two atom. That wave has negative charge and that wave is free to project out of the region of nucleus of two atoms. The best way to visualize it is you visualize it as smoke. Smoke coming out of chimney or from wherever and that smoke tries to occupy the entire space around it. But this is not very free to move out of this region and, and to expand all over because this, this wave has negative charge and it is bounded by two positively charged nucleus. So most of the wave will be between the two nucleuses but some of it will be free to move out. This kind of visualization we must have of electron in every kind of phenomena that we study from here. Now, so there's a wave between two nucleuses of electron. Uh, there's a wave of electron between two nucleuses and there's an empty orbital adjacent to this wave. Now, this system cannot remain stable in, and in the state that is shown here because there's electronic high pressure and adjacent to this high pressure, we have an electronic vacuum. This this is analogous to the situation. So what happens is, some of the electronic wave come out of the region of the bond and move into this orbital. This phenomena is called hyperconjugation. Now we will formally define hyperconjugation as movement of sigma bonded electron to adjacent P orbital. This is called hyperconjugation. This is also called as sigma bond resonance because uh, this is a sigma bond and electron is moving from sigma bond to adjacent orbital. Resonance is a term that has huge importance and significance in chemistry. That will be our next to next topic. Resonance simply means movement of electron. Most of the time in resonance we move, we move only pi electrons here. Sigma electron is moving so we call it as sigma bond resonance. It is also called as no bond resonance. Now there are certain conditions that have to be fulfilled for hyperconjugation to operate. Okay, uh, conditions for hyperconjugation to operate. Condition number one, 
the first condition is we have electronic wave between the nucleus of two atoms and this wave has to project out and enter into a adjacent orbital. Now this can happen only if the wave is free enough. The wave has to be loose enough to come out and enter into the adjacent orbital. Suppose the wave is very tightly held between nucleuses of two atoms. Suppose the nucleus has huge positively charged, positive charge, then the wave which is in between the two nucleus will be tightly held between the two nucleuses and they will not project out enough to enter the adjacent orbital. So in this case, if the electrons are very very tightly held between the two nucleuses, they will not be free enough to enter into the adjacent orbital. So if we have such a case, then in this kind of uh, situation, hyperconjugation will not operate. So the first condition that must be fulfilled is the electronic wave in the bond must be loose enough to enter into the adjacent orbital. Now the electronic wave uh, has to be loose enough that means the attraction from the nucleus has to be less and the attraction from the nucleus is because of the positive charge of the nucleus and positive charge is due to number of protons. Higher atoms, the atoms having high atomic number will have more number of protons. That means the nucleus of heavier atoms will have more positive charge and that more positive charge will offer more attraction to the negatively charged wave and that will make it tight and that will not allow it to move out. So the bond which is formed between heavy atoms, they are stronger bonds and hyperconjugation does not operate from that. We have only one bond in chemistry from which hyperconjugation can operate and that is bond between carbon and hydrogen. Hydrogen has the least atomic number, hydrogen has a small nucleus having only one proton. Carbon has six proton. Because of the small size of hydrogen, there is only a small positive charge and that small positive charge offers small attraction to the electro negatively charged electronic waves. That wave is not tightly held between the two nucleuses, that wave is free, that wave is loose. So it can come out and it enter into a adjacent empty orbital. So if the bond is weak, only then hyperconjugation con can operate and it is a fact that you have to take as an information that in organic there is only one bond from which you will op operate hyperconjugation. That is only CS bond, not CC, not CO, not CN, not any other bond. Only CH bond and for that matter you, always, you also have CD and CT bond. D and T are brothers of H, they are isotopes of hydrogen. So that's condition number one. Bond has to be weak, bond, electron in the bond has to be loose enough to come out and move into adjacent orbital. Condition number two. Now suppose you have a CH bond. So uh, hyperconjugation can operate from this CH bond. But this CH bond happens to be at beta position. Now the carbon which has plus charge, that means the carbon which is having empty orbital, the carbon adjacent to that carbon having plus charge is called alpha carbon. And the carbon after that is called beta carbon. After that it's gamma and after that it's delta. If the CH bond is at beta position, hyperconjugation cannot operate from beta position. Now this is this is a fact, this is the rule of the thumb that will all that will never ever be violated for any kind of electronic transition, whether it is hyperconjugation or afterwards we'll be seeing in resonance. In any kind of electronic transition, the orbital has to be adjacent to each other. You should not have a distance greater than that of a one bond. These two bonds is a great distance for an electron to move from one orbital to another. This kind of electronic transition does not occur. Electronic transition occurs only from alpha position if this bond and the orbital are adjacent. That means there is a gap of only one bond, then only hyperconjugation can operate. Then only the electronic wave can come out and enter into the adjacent orbital. The reason is very simple as we have seen because the wave is between two nucleus. Those nucleus has plus charge and the wave has minus charge. So the wave is held between the two nucleuses but a part of it is free to come out. But it is not, not free enough to move or to cover a large distance. And if the orbital is far away, these waves cannot enter from this distance to a far away orbital. And beta position is a far away position for electronic transition. So uh, the first thing is the wave has to be free to come out but it cannot come out and enter or cover any distance. 
the distance has not to be more than that of a one bond. That means the bond, the CH bond from which hyperconjugation will operate, that should not be a far away from alpha position. Not at beta, not at gamma, not at delta. It has to be at alpha position. The third condition for hyperconjugation to operate is the bond and the empty orbital must be parallel to each other. In this case, hyperconjugation will operate or it must be almost parallel to each other. Here also hyperconjugation will operate. Now, we are seeing this here, we will see this again when we will study hyper, uh, resonance. For any kind of electronic transition, the orbitals has to be parallel or almost parallel. If they happens to be perpendicular, suppose the CH bond and the orbitals are oriented like this. Now, the angle between this bond and the orbital is 90 degree. Electronic transition does not occur like this. When the bond becomes perpendicular to the orbital, there is no electronic transition at all. The best transition is when they are parallel, when they, become, they, shift, they, when they shift away from parallelity, then the extent of hyperconjugation decreases. When they become perpendicular, the extent of hyperconjugation is zero. Now why this happens, I'll give you a slight hint, and after we'll study uh, hybridization, things will be more clear to you. Actually, um, you must be knowing that the orbitals, whether it is a pure P orbital or it is a hybridized orbital, are broader at the end and they are narrower at the node. So uh, being broader at the end, most of the electronic density resides at the end. So if, if the bond becomes perpendicular to the orbital, what happens is the orbital of carbon, the broadness of the orbital that becomes perpendicular to the orbital. So the electronic transition, the distance for the electronic transition becomes large enough. Because if the orbital is parallel, this broad, the, this part of the orbital which is broad, that is at a shorter distance with the empty orbital. And when this becomes perpendicular, the broader part becomes farther away from the empty orbital. So if the distance, due to large distance, this, this electronic transition is not permissible. This is how we can feel this but this is how it is. So these are the three conditions which has to be fulfilled for hyperconjugation to operate. In the next lecture, we will be studying the application of this concept. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.